Okay, first off, uh, the clips that you showed today were freaking amazing. It looks like you really took Laid to Rest 2 and just amped it by 100, mm -hmm. which is what good sequels do is, you know, take the original and yeah. then amp it up. Um, now, when you made Laid to Rest 1, did you originally have intentions to do a Laid to Rest 2, or were well, you just really... Well, when, when we made the first movie, I mean, you always think about things like that because it is a franchisable type series. Um, but no, I, I didn't have an idea that we would do a second one. But I think that we got a lot of things really right about the first movie. I think that Chrome Skull as a character is something that uh, the, the fans really responded to and wanted to know more about. And I think the kills, I think you can't really beat the kills in a late to rest movie. And I think that, you know, un unwittingly or unknowingly, I sort of raised the bar for not only myself as a sequel, but for every other slasher film, um, especially low budget slasher film. There's just nothing like the kills that I do in the late to rest movies out there. So I think that. Um, I said, okay, so we got a couple of things really right with the first movie. People really like Chrome Skull and they, and they like the kill, so let's make a completely different movie based around that concept. The only the only continuity really besides Thomas Decker's character is Chrome Skull and the kills. Everything else is completely redone. Awesome. Um, now, one thing I was wondering, uh, there's a song that appeared in Lightning Bug. Sexy Bitches. Are my favorite kind of bitches. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't happen to appear in Later Rest 2, does it? Of course it does. I don't make movies without that. Fucking A. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's an inside little joke. The sexy bitches are my favorite kind of bitches. Thomas Decker went and made an actual song that's on our Later Rest <laughs> soundtrack. Um, a little disco song for that. Like, um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's just been in all of my movies. It's kind of like a little inside joke um, from Lightning Bug. <laughs> so it's, it, it definitely reappears in Chrome Skull. Awesome, awesome. Now, considering your first film was kind of a drama set for horror fans, which is a really ballsy move to, I mean, it's a hard film to market, not for nothing. Yeah, it is. Um, now, for future projects and whatnot, are you looking to strictly, strictly uh, stick to the horror genre, or are you looking to maybe branch out and do some different kind of genre of films, like drama, stuff no, like that? No, I, I definitely think that I, I'd like to return to do, you know, a, I'm definitely drawn to darker things, but I... I, I Picture my next movie more of like a, a lightning bug kind of movie. I mean, I can only tell that story once. You know, lightning bug yeah. is my story, and I told it, and I think I told it pretty well for a first movie. And um, so that that movie is done. But I definitely feel like I have another lightning bug kind of movie in me. Um, I would like to do another drama. I'd actually like to do a comedy, and I especially drawn to doing, you know, more horror and thriller. Like I'm, I'm drawn to all of that stuff. But I, <clears throat> I certainly don't want to pigeonhole myself because I love one of my favorite movies of all time is Sling Blade which is how I like Lightning Bug. You know, like I like in Lightning Bug a little bit more to a sling blade than a horror film. So, I mean, I'd like to do like something like that for sure. Cool, cool. And uh, Lady Rest 2 is going to be hitting the shelves on September 20th? Yep, Lady Rest 2 hits the shelves, Chrome Skull, on uh, September 20th. And then we're, uh, there'll probably be opportunities for most people to see it uh, on a big screen before that is about all I can really say right now. But yeah, it's, um, and the great thing is with, with our new distributor with Image, we're guaranteed Blu-ray, so you'll be able to go to that Tuesday and buy Blu-ray instead of the DVD, which is so 2004 of them. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, um, you have any like uh, parting words for any of the viewers at home? Any advice for aspiring filmmakers that are really looking up to you, that sort of thing? Um, you know, honestly, just, it, it's crazy, you know? Everyone thinks they're, you know, they sort of put everyone up on a pedestal or making movies. It's like I see people here making the same kind of movies, you know. They're, they're yeah. making the same movies with their, with their friends in their backyards, with their prosumer cameras, you know. I mean, yeah. we made Late to Rest on a, on a DSLR camera from Fry's. Yeah. Late to Rest 2, that is. We, we shot it on a, on a um, Canon 7D and a 5D, which are like $2,000 cameras. Yeah. And so, you know, it doesn't take a fortune to make a movie. And it doesn't take... take fortune to make a good movie you know so put your ideas out there there's no excuse like experiment i see cooler shit on vimeo these days from kids with prosumer cameras than i see in the movie theater so i just want people to keep doing that and not feel like they have to uh you know have like a, a zillion dollars to make a movie if you've got a good idea you got a decent camera go make a movie cool cool well man i really do appreciate cool. your time um looking forward to the late to rest too how come you didn't yes. put part two and just I'm wondering on that one. There's a lot of movies that just kind of stop putting the part I twos. Know. I don't know. I guess I didn't want to be like Eli Roth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good point. All right, man. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I just you. appreciate it.